Yes. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Uh, of course, we're still in it. We're one point <laughs> off the top, and cities running, I'm sorry, is actually quite difficult. I don't care how big a squad you've got. I don't care how good you think you are. Real Madrid are going to come at them like a steam train over two legs. They've got the FA Cup final to think about, and they've got to go away to Everton, battling to stay up. They've got to go away to Brighton, battling to get in Europe, away to Brentford, again, potentially battling to be in Europe. These are not easy games, and they're not games I think uh, that Guardiola will take lightly. So if they were to trip up and we keep winning and we keep playing like we did yesterday, anything could happen. Yeah, I think you're right, Piers. You know, like in between the Madrid Champions League game, you've got Everton, um, and that's yeah. the t- as the manager, you'd be, you'd be saying, listen, don't get your, get your eye on the ball, because I know we've had just played Real Madrid, but we've now got to win this game. So yeah. they could slip up. Yeah, and, and you know, I think psychologically, you would know this better than me, Dean, but the, psychologically, players who've got these massive games like Real Madrid and a double header in the Champions League semi final, you know, they're, they're just going to be thinking about that. Are they going to be full all in physically, mm. mentally in these domestic games against teams like Everton? Maybe, maybe Guardiola and all people could probably get them in the right headspace. But I was incredibly encouraged by Arsenal's performance yesterday. You know, we've had a wobble, and it was a big wobble, let's be honest, to be 2-0 up in two consecutive mm-hmm. games and not win them, and then to go 2-0 down to the worst team in the division uh, and only scrape a draw, and then just not to turn up at all at City, which was embarrassing. That was a proper wobble, and I did think then, have we bottled it? Well, yesterday, we show we haven't bottled it, and that Arteta's got them back into the right frame of mind. And throughout this season, we've had little wobbles, and we've come back strongly. So we've got to do our job. Arsenal have to win the last three games, but they're very winnable. Two games at home, Brighton Wolves, one game away at Forest. We should win all those. If we don't, we don't deserve to be anywhere near getting a Premier League trophy. But if we do, I think we're going to ask some questions. And I would be surprised, and you can play this back to me in June, but I would be surprised if City win all their remaining league games. Ooh, okay. Um, On that last night, Odegaard, Ramsdale, brilliant games. Arteta, though, I particularly liked having a bit of the dark arts and and managing to master that against a Newcastle side who actually throughout the season have been quite naughty themselves in wasting time. (laughs) Yeah, well, we played them at their own game and they didn't like it. Uh, But that was great to see. I thought we had a... We, our tactics generally were really good. I liked Arteta's substitutions yesterday. They came at the right time, the right players. I think the look, what's been the biggest problem for Arsenal this season? I think just not having a squad as deep as cities and a lot of our top players just getting tired. You look at Saka, you look at Zinchenko, they just look tired. And there's not much you can do about that. They've had to run them into the ground because we don't have two world-class players in every position. So we've had to play our best players in most of the games, certainly in recent months. And I think they're just getting knackered. But, you know, I think that I watched Jorginho yesterday. I thought he he won man of the match. I thought he was a terrific Mm -hmm. player yesterday. And actually, if I'd been Arteta, I'd I'd have, looking back on it, maybe he should have played Jorginho in some of these other games recently because he is a proper winner. This is a guy who's won the European Championships. He made the Euros team of the tournament. You know, he's a proper, proper player who understands the pressure of what it's like to win big trophies and how you get over that line. And, you know, Partey is another one who I think has been showing uh, a bit of a sign of fatigue. So I think Arteta's working this out. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it's too late. But no. I've got to say, yesterday filled me with hope that didn't exist last week. Piers, I know they keep playing, replaying your Arteta out statement that you mm. made a long time ago. But and Heinz, with hindsight, it's easy to 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 see now what's happened. But mm. I agree with you. I mean, at the time, I think he took over a sinking ship. Um, he's got a lot of players there who weren't trying, basically. Mm. He's got control of the dressing room by getting rid of Aubameyang. And most of all, the owners have said, stick with him. And because Mm. the players know he's not going anywhere, they've only got one option, roll his sleeves up. And since that moment where he got rid of Aubameyang, he's got control of the club. Yeah, look, I'll be honest. I didn't agree with that decision because I loved Aubameyang, but he's been vindicated by, I think, events since then. Also, it's not that long ago that I and many Arsenal fans had pretty well lost faith in Arteta. It was this time last year, funny enough, when we got beaten 2-0 by Newcastle. And I was really struck by Arteta playing the players, the 
scene from the Amazon dock of of the inquest after that really bad loss because we lost five of the last 10 league games last season self imploded at the worst possible time missed out on top four Tottenham got that fourth place all of it was hellish and I think if you asked most Arsenal fans honestly at that stage of the season this time last year do you think it's right as he got a three-year new three-year deal off the back of three consecutive losses at this time last year. Would most Arsenal fans have agreed with that decision? I don't think they did. They only judge it on social media and the response, but I certainly felt he'd had two full seasons. He'd lost, I think, 13 league matches in both seasons. He'd imploded at the end of last season. And it seemed to me crazy that his reward for that was a new three-year deal. But, and it's an important but, the owners saw something in Arteta, which I didn't. And funny enough, I only really saw it when I watched that Amazon series. And by the end of that, I said to my sons, who've been resolutely Arteta in, uh, all big gooners, uh, I said to them, you know what? I think I've misjudged this guy. I said, I really like the way the players and the, and the fans, actually, towards the end of that series, have come round to, to Arteta and they believe in him and they have faith in, in his process. And I do think that uh, I changed my view of him. And I, I'm not afraid to admit that. I don't think there's any great merit in continuing to ignore the evidence in front of your eyes that Arteta has been brilliant this season. And I think will turn out to be a great, great Arsenal manager who will hopefully bring us lots of trophies. So, yeah, a year ago, I'd have said the complete opposite. But I think if Arsenal fans are honest a lot of them would have said the same. Not me. Not me, Piers. I remember that <laughs> conversation with you this time last year. Yes. No, no, you, to be fair, you were right and I was wrong. Now, oh. th that, that sentence is painful, particularly having to admit it to you I know. live on the radio. But you were right, Miss oh. Woods, and I was wrong. <gasps> Can we clip that up, please? And just have that for me whenever we need it. Well, you know we you're already going to clip it up because that's how you get your clickbait out of it. Is, it? And I'm it? fine. I'm relaxed with that, as you can tell. <laughs> My voice didn't just suddenly go into full-on angry, grumpy mode. Uh, you can do it. You can put it out. I was wrong. Excellent. You were right. Excellent. I cannot wait to have a brilliant bank holiday Monday off the back of that. Um, Piers, i got to ask you. I, I saw you tweeted about it, and I, I was also watching the so Liverpool against Brentford. Um, they won mm. the game, and, and we've been singing Liverpool's praise for the performances they're putting in towards the end of the season. Mm. But the fans during that game, they, they booed the national anthem and they booed it so loud you could, you could barely hear the national anthem. What did you make of that? Uh, pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. If you want to make a protest about singing the national anthem, just don't sing it. Silence would have been just as effective. In fact, all they did was make the world look at Liverpool fans in a bad way. And why? I, lo I love Liverpool. I love the, the city. I love the people. Uh, normally, I love Liverpool fans. I think they're some of the best fans in the world. And you know, when they sing You'll Never Walk Alone, it's incredibly moving. And they have always demanded, rightly, unanimous respect for them on issues that matter to them and causes that matter to them. And they've got that. And I just felt that they just let themselves down. And I, I wonder how many people in Liverpool are really happy that on this momentous day for our country, a day of history, that they actually will be remembered for trying to ruin it with a series of ugly banners, nasty chants, booing, and general sort of, well, I don't know what they were trying to achieve. And, and what's the point? Are they trying to say that somehow King Charles has done something bad to the people of Liverpool? No, of course he hasn't. He's only ever been supportive. So I don't know why they're targeting him, why they're trying to ruin his big day. And I just think Liverpool fans should grow up um, because I, I watched it and thought, oh, really? Pathetic. Um, Piers, thank you very much. Thanks uh, for your comments on that. And also thanks for your comments on Arsenal as well. Um, we will see. You've actually filled me with a bit of optimism this morning. I feel better. I do. You see, I'm here, Mr. Motivator. Okay. Come on, Laura. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods. Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.